Hello and welcome back to Planescape Torment. So, we are still looking around in the brawl. The patrons are very rude to us, but the ladies are quite welcoming. And we don't have to pay. But there is no service I'm gone. either, so... It's a, it's a hit, or, hit and miss so far. We managed uh, to get one of them. Done. Get kicked. Oh. I forced it. I'm gone. Why? Her boyfriend? He was a he was a big boss, but hey, so far that's a hit or miss. Oh, come on, did you leave the room? Where is she? Hey, Echo, come on, you can't just go outside. You missed the experience of me looting your stuff, taking all you own. This is what you have right now. <clears throat> this striking young woman has a skin the color of burnished copper, a translucent white dress held precariously by golden clasps, is draped carefully over her shapely form. Greetings! The woman nods and smiles briefly. The scent of her hair, sweetly perfumed, fills your nostrils. Hmm. This is not... Again, this is another new woman that we don't know about. <laughs> Had some questions. She nods. Who are you? Smiles and curtsies, but offers no response. Can you speak? She shakes her head and smiles sadly at you. Why not? Updated my journal. <laughs> what the hell, Morty? I love this shit already. Can you, can you, can you write? Then, uh, or pantomime? You can't write or pantomime? Like, why would I want pantomime? Actually, I would love that. I'm just kidding. I would want pantomime all the time. She pouts, shaking her head. May I ask why you can't communicate? She sighs softly and nods. Actually, let me ask you about something else. Who are you? He smiles and curtsies, but offers no response. My some other question. Can you tell me about this place? He looks at you, then raises an eyebrow. That's some other question. Do you know anything about Razor Puzzle well? Her eyes flash and she smiles. She nods at you. What do you know of her? Updated my journal. She simply looks at you. May I ask why you can't communicate? We got updated the journal from that one? Wow, we must be really desperate, like... I asked about... Well, what what the hell did I write in my, write in my journal? I asked Echo... I know she's called Echo because she has a... A, I know, a name tag, but she did not communicate. I asked her about Ravo Puzzlewell, and she looked at me weird. She kind of smiled, she curtsied a little bit, she sighed slowly and nodded, and also did a funny thing with her eyebrow, and that's it. I'm writing that down as a tip. We need that. <clears throat> Actually, let me ask you something else. I'm trying to find Vivian's scent. Do you know where it might be? She shakes her head, uh, shrugging, and gives you an, an apologetic look. Yeah. Fine, whatever. Done. She's just... That was obvious in that. All right. Fine, whatever. Oh. No one here? Dude, you're gonna get the same treatment right. because... Forced you know, it. And a half. Oh. Don't know more they, they, they want the... the Forced they, it. They, they don't want them don't to no miss the Done. experience all of right. losing all their stuff. It would be a shame that the ladies attack you for that. Don't know more strain. All right, that, that would suck. But... I think that's not gonna happen. At least so far, they were fairly welcoming. <clears throat> oh, what is this? What is this? Oh, are you kidding me? I, how the hell was I supposed to find that? A secret door, not even marked. I found it. By, by pixel hunting. Not even sh that was that was some luck right there. I'm just curious if we get some tips about it. All right. Or I just seriously, I need to just luck it. Oh, some coins. Hmm. Marissa, why don't you? I don't know. Light a candle or something. It's awfully dark in here. What are you doing behind that thingy? Squinting at the figure behind the 
partition, you can barely make out a shapely female form in the darkness. She turns to you, but you can see nothing of her face. Greetings! The figure answers in a voice that is slow and deadly, like a steel dagger drawn across stone. Slow and deadly. Yes, come to speak with Marissa, have you? Quite rude of you to enter a darkened room, storming behind my partition like. So rude and foolhardy. You can hear a faint whispering sound like a slight breeze or the hissing of serpents. Body whispers quietly. Whoa, creepy shit! My apologies, my lady, I wasn't sure if someone was here. The woman gives a slight, hmm. But it would seem there is someone in this room, wouldn't it? Shall you be on your way then? No, just I have some questions. Ask. Wow, we can hit. Okay, we can t talk about. Why do you remain behind the screen with this screen? Is it, is it your wish that I step away from this partition into some patch of light and speak? Do you face to face? Marissa laughs and there is a sound of scales sliding on scales. Nay, I think not. The darkness suits me and doubtless suits you as well. You know, just being in the dark ruins your eyes. You know that, right? Why is it so dark in here? To prevent any unwanted and embarrassing casualties. Now, what is it you want? I, I just... I want you to come into the light. Nay. And the addition of please will not serve to precede me. Now, what do you want? Surely you... You did not come all this way to see me. I do want to see what you look like. You have no such want. Oh, I do. What do you look like? The darkness hides us both. Let's it make let's make it a game. I'm frightfully bored. Let me guess. Are you a human male? Damn! She's on to me. No? Not even close. I think so. I think so. You think so? How could it not know? Oh, come on, don't be a doofus. I, I, I meant that as a joke. I really have no sure idea what I am, miss. Oh, come on. It's, it's kind of complicated. That's what I said. <laughs> Indeed. It must be too great for a mere mind such as mine to grasp. Yes. I'm like, you gotta come here and figure it out. I'm looking for a real hooker here. And still no luck. I would be, like... Explored half the establishment, still no real hookers. I really have no sure idea of, of what I am. <clears throat> Truly, that's almost interesting. There's a sound of hissing in the darkness. Are you a snake? Hmm, describe yourself to, for me. You first, Marissa. Wow. <laughs> wow, we're gonna make it a... I don't know. Some kind of a sexy chat. Shall we trade adjective for adjective? Then I start with shapely. You must surrender the next adjective. I'm tall. No, well muscled, yes. Hmm, I say. I shall say pale skinned. The two of you banter adjectives back and forth in this matter until she's finally described herself as a shapely, pale skinned, beautiful woman with a fourth tongue, hair made up of breathing asps and glowing eyes, which you can assume she must be keeping shut. Are you a fiend? <clears throat> Updated my journal. <laughs> Mary Salas lightly. The sound accompanied by a slight hissing. No, hardly. Though I have uh, powers some might call fiendish. 
My glance turns living things to stone, for instance, from beings of flesh to statuary with the bat of an eyelash. Wow! Living things to stone? Could you turn, say, a limb limb into a statue? Not my limb limb, though. Updated my journal. I suppose I could. Had you a limb limb where I inclined to do so, and I might be so inclined that I... My crimson veil. But I do not know where it has gone. Have you seen it, perchance? No, what's it for? Is it just a normal veil? Uh, nah, not, not quite. It aids me in communication. Face-to-face -face communication, that is. Why do you seek to hide your face? Enough with the asinine questions. How tiresomely annoying you are. What do you want? I just want some questions answered. What are you doing here? Sitting here with my thoughts, listening to your voice. Silence of them, literal and figurative, is deafening. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. No, I think not. You would find them most unflattering at this moment. Was it it you'd want? Ask some other questions. Of course. Can you tell me about this place? What can you tell me about the silent prostitute? Yes. Updated my journal. Yes, Echo. I knew another Echo once, though her name was written differently. I know nothing of this girl, though. As the Laura of her, she made friends of an old lover of Echo's. I have heard. I don't know the question. I was told you were seen sneaking away from Vivian's chamber recently. Is that connected with her missing scent somehow? Updated my journal. <clears throat> Marissa says nothing, though an angry hissing issue from the darkness around her. Yes, I've been known to creep into Vivian's chambers for some of her perfumes, though I doubt you'll meet another here who wasn't. If you are implying that I got her personal scent, well, free field to snip around. You will not find it on me or in my chambers. I assure you, personal, perhaps whoever took my crimson whale well, took Vivian's scent as well. Man, it must be Dolora. I don't know the question. How do I sniff around? I don't I don't have the skill to sniff around. Perhaps some of my companions. We need a dog. Damn. Do you know what I think about Ravel Puzzlewell? No, do you? You you hear an annoy sigh from out of the darkness. Go ask Yves. She collects many tales and can probably tell you something of use. Alright, that's it. Looks like we uh, good. Done. So we want the experience of uh Area Sensei, because I'm giving the uh, experience of getting robbed. Do you care for Done. it? I don't know. I'm like... Alright, All let's right. just go. Oh, so Yves or Dolores? I'm Over gone. here. I'm gone. Hmm. So, looks like I kinda... Alright, we're right. heading... All right. Oh boy. Who's here? No one's Done. here. We can just loot. Come on. Forced it. Stop fooling around, nameless one. We, we, we need you to loot the containers before they run to us. Done. All right. You know, stop hiccuping. I'll, I'll figure it out. Maybe we need All to right. resurrect them. Oh, Kimashi, other tongue. Who are you? I'm gone. Handkerchief? Ah, oh, come on. Forced really? it. Seriously? Okay. We need to talk. <clears throat> the wild looking uh, tiefling girl meets uh, your gaze with an angry skull. Her tattooed body is practically naked. Okay. Covered by only a narrow leather tongue, a black uh, cloth uh, brassiere, and a. Uh, and armored shoulder pads that appear to serve more as a decoration rather than actual protection. Her spiked hair, as uh, well as the thin fur that covers her goat-like legs, is brassy white. 
and the numerous silver rings that dangle from her ears, nostrils, lips and brow. She wears a leather collar around her throat with a inscription, Ximeski, other tongue. Greetings! Ximeski bears her teeth at you. And just what are you looking at? You banged up sod? My friend thought you were attractive, but wow! Was he ever, was he ever horribly mistaken? She sneers at Morty, then looks below him, where a body would normally be. Sharp tongue for a stemless deader. That's enough, of you two. Let them keep at it. <clears throat> like I'd let mine anywhere near if I had one. What did you hear the word uh, brothel and think you could make some jink here, you flea bitten cutter whore? Haha, <laughs> can't believe you've ever let uh, in the door and what with all those ticks hopping off your shaggy legs. Let them keep at it. Just go! Ticks, the only annoying insect around here is you. He suddenly turns to you. Hey, you here to talk to me or what? No, I'm just here to watch you guys fight. Or what? What else I can do with you? Huh. <laughs> what did you have in mind, you sodding jawbox? Go ahead, give me a reason to say no to you. What do you usually do for patrons? I'm a practitioner of abuse. Whoa! What's that mean? I'll show you. Her hand lashes out to slap your face, but you manage to barely dodge the blow. Kimaxi pouts visibly and scowls. Oh well. <laughs> I would. Say, can you teach Morty here to be more abusive? She raises her eyebrow. Now that's an, an unusual request. I don't know. It seems pretty far mouthed mouth already. Hey! That's he! Seems pretty foul mouth. Kimaski bladder bunk, bladder dunk, you scruffy goat gant harlot. You wish. <clears throat> you wish you had legs like mine, you pitiful wretch of bone box. I can walk, run, dance. What do you do? Bob around wishing you had a pair? Goats or otherwise? The two of them lay into another, exchanging uh, barbed, blistering insults and clashing with razor edged tongues. Wait for it to end. At last the two stop their bickering and an eerie silence settles over them as uh, the eye one another. As they eye one another hatefully. Finally, the tiefling makes a grudging admission to Morty. You're not bad. Not really. Not bad at all. Better than you, perhaps. Morty waggles his eyebrows at her. Eh? He makes the nervous her eyes at Morty. Don't push, it's cool. New taunts, all right. I won't, Tiefling. I'll admit, I might have learned a thing or two, though. Good good thinking, Chief. Sure thing, Morty. He makes it turns to you. She. <clears throat> so, that was all. That, that all you wanted? I'm not spending any more time near, that, near you than I have to. Actually, I actually have some other questions. What? <clears throat> Tiefling rolls her eyes. And what makes you think I care? Why. Why don't you lick my backside? You want that? My tongue... <laughs> wow. Okay, go with it! I wanna, I wanna scuffle as well. My tongue's not wide enough and I don't like hair in my mouth. <laughs> well, you seem to like the taste of awful in your mouth, you tongue breed cretin. Only because it's like kissing you, you man man mangy stink pot. Kiss me? She makes a retching sound. I'd rather kiss a bloody mass of plagum than lay my lips on you. No thanks. Don't thank me. Thank the powers someone actually wants to kiss you. Kimaski looks at a loss for some, uh, something to say. For an instant, a smile threatens to crack the grimacing mask of her face. And she becomes more of a basilisk than ever. Alright, what do you want of me? 
Questions answered. What can you tell me about the silent prostitute? Who are you? My name? Uninterested. I, I can guess yours, though. Scarbunch, get out of here before I can put a fire under your arse. Yeah, that's exactly that's my name. I have another question. What are you doing here? Not you, that's for certain. She smirks at you. I'm contemplating the best way to tell you to pike off next. I have another question. Oh, Tiefflix, you need to you you need to check your attitude. What can you tell me about the silent prostitute? What? The echo chip? Don't know anything about her. Don't talk to her, that girl. I mean, why? No, no, not like she can talk back. Ask freaking Dolores about her. I think I saw her playing go with an old crush of Echoes back from when when she could talk. She could talk. I have another question. <clears throat> I'm trying to find Vivian's scent. Do you know where it might be? Try a hive gutter. Well, perhaps that's just the smell aroma. To be serious, though. Marisa stole it. Marisa, are you sure? No, but I'm hoping you'll go stomping into her room and upset her enough to do something awful to you. Hmm, that's some other questions. I'm trying to find Marisa's Crimson Veil. Do you know where it might be? Wow, these girls have a lot of issues. I thought like, oh, I'm just gonna pop in and get out. Like, no! Whoa! He smirks. Shh. Up your arse, perhaps. Else, I don't know. Kimaski smooths back her hair. Which instantly springs back up into a spiky mess. I don't know the question. And do you know anything about the uh, Revo Puzzle What would I know about her? I look like a scholar or something to you? Go ask someone more learned, or Javes. She will probably have at least one story about her in that uh, pile of tales she carries about in her bone box. Oh, and uh, squat on. A uh, halberd while you're at it. I'll do that. Thanks. Um. Still, I'm gonna offer you the experience of All getting right. robbed. Done. Come on. Jeez. Namuson, what the hell are you doing? I'm oh, yeah, gone. Did that? I'm gonna, you better make sure. You don't want them to miss it. Far from Greece. I'm getting to know your girls. So far, at zero sex. Jeeves, the tail, 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 tail chaser. All right. We just gotta see about that. Four stick. I'm gonna give you the experience of getting robbed. Oh, love letter. I think we should open up with that. This is a passionate, steamy, and rather graphic love letter. Who is it to and whom it's from, however, are quite vague. Okay. This is lame. I wanted to experience my steamy, that steamy love that for myself. I guess it couldn't be that steamy. Ninety nine eyes. Okay. Yves, <clears throat> this fetching young woman has a faraway look in her soft sea green eyes. Greetings. Greetings. <clears throat> no. Greetings. I'm Yves, the tail chaser. You're chasing tails. I like that. What a coincidence. I chase. <laughs> Two. I chase tails. Yes, continues, unperturbed. Have you come to trade tales? I like to, I like to do that. Jeves nods. I would like that very much. Yes. Well, I can, I can tell you a lot. I can tell you a lot of tales. I'm gonna tell you about the Silent King. How about that? Ask one of your companions if they have a story to tell. I'm on that. You evades your story patiently. No one wants Dakun's story. He's a boring guy. Anna, how about you? I, I'm no good at uh, telling such things. I'm not. I, she frowns and waves her hands as if uh, trying to shoo away the idea. Don't be asking me for such nonsense now. You smiles at Anna. But I would very much like to hear your story. Please. Uh, you gotta do it. Do it. Please share your story, Anna. Come on already, friendling. You already have one tail you won't part with. 
Anna looks uncomfortable, her tail lashing slowly back and forth. Well, I know one story. She suddenly becomes angry, glaring at Yves. But you might not like it. You won't. So don't be blaming me for your choking it out of me. Go ahead, Anna. Anna scowls, then finally relents with an exasperated sigh. I heard a story when I was a VLS. This Burke's walking home real late near near anti near anti peak and passes an old toothless crone in the darkened, otherwise empty street. Where are you going? she asked him. Go on. Home to me wife and uh, Kip, he says. Near the slags? He says. She she asks him. Sure enough, he says. So she asks him a favor, to take a box she's got to Deader Pit and give it to the woman there. Now this Burke's a real sap, too nice to say no despite the fact he's uh, sure something not quite right about this old crone and agrees. But what's the woman's name, he asks. Where does she live? Where should I look for her if she's not in the Deader's Pit? The woman hands him a box, a wooden thing wrapped in colored cloth, and tells him to just go, and she'll be there. Finally, she warns him, and whatever he does, do not open the box. So he takes it home with him and hides it in the rough rafters, thinking he'll bring it to it by the deader's pit when lights out. His wife, though. Seeing him hiding the box, gets right jealous thinking it's a gift, or a lover, or something, and opens it as soon as he's not looking. Well, turns out the box was full of gouged out eyes and severed male members with the hair still on them. Her scream brought the Burke running. He remembered that what the crone said, got right scared and wrapped the box back up. <clears throat> He went out straight away to the other pit, and sure enough, there was an old hag there waiting for him. There waiting for him. He answered the box, and I. And she says to him, "The box has been opened. I looked into." The poor Burke tries to deny it, but she gets his dreadful look on her face. "You've done something terrible," he tells him, and disappears. That dawn, he hurries back to his skip. He's feeling ill when he gets back and takes the bed. His wife bitterly regretted opening the box and all, but it was too late. The next day, he died of a rotten disease, and the first thing to go was his eyes and stem. And nods grimly, her tail complete. Give a smile. That was a that was a beautiful tale, Anna. You should never hesitate to share share it. No, I have one for you and your companion. The parched land. I want something else. I want... Go on. Okay, fine, go on. Once a large village was struck by a terrible drought, a farmer journeyed to the worship stone and again implored it as to the cause of the drought. He asked the stone, why did it not... Why did why it did nothing when the fields were parched and dying? Why the animals and the people suffered? While the stone did not did not a thing, have we not given enough offerings? The farmer asked, begging almost upon his lands and needs. But the stone did not respond. It merely sat and cast its shadow. That's it? That's your story? That's... Crap! I have another tale to share with you. Give us nods. I would, I would like that very much, yes. My companions. Uh, I'm gonna tell you about the Silent King. Give us leans forward as you tell the tale of the of a hidden nation of undead ruled by a corpse who hasn't spoken in a thousand years. 
She seems to devour your every word. As you finish, she smiles at you. I shall remember this tale, and now I have one for you. The petitioner at the gate. Go on. <clears throat> it was far off the peak when the distant pounding was heard at the gates of the prison. Carus, the oldest mercy killer known to the faction, dragged himself from his post, making his way known down to the hall. Uh, the, down the hall to the great gates that separated the punished from the outside world. The pounding did not fade as he reached the gate and spoke to it. He called out and received no answer. He opened the gate, far from feeling caution, but a strange, compelling sensation. A Haggard figure was on bent knees just beyond the door. Her hands were bloody from where they had been pounding against the gate, and her breath came in labored gasps. As the flickering lights, light from the interior prison chamber poured, poured across the cobbles, she glanced up at the mercy killer who stood framed in the doorway and began to sob with relief. He felt himself mirrored in all but his gender as he star star stared at that woman, and he was stirred by her presence. Karis found himself unsure of what to say, as he so he simply waited for the woman to provide an ex explanation. She did. It was a simple statement, but of utmost importance, and it made Karis, whose knees ached painfully with every movement, bend down and help the woman to her feet. He brought her in from the outside, guiding her gently into the passage beyond. She had said that an injustice has been done, and that was all that Karus needed to hear. In the end, it came to pass that she could not fulfill her duty as a fury, for a man guilty of blood crime has died unpunished. She begged Karus and the mercy killers for aid, and so they executed her. She had failed in her charge. And so is stuck too! What the hell? You really need my stories, woman. I have another tip to share with you. I actually... Can we just... I had a question for you. Why are you called the tail chaser? What are you doing here? Can you tell me about this place? Jivas, you look familiar. Are you, is your name... Is your mother named Giovanna? You must not. Yes, but she and I no longer speak. Just as I just as I shall speak no more of her. That's just sad. No no no. Can you tell me of one of the stories you already shared again? No no no, we don't want that. What can you tell me of the silent prostitute? Echo? Hm. She frowns, thinking. I once heard a tale of a girl who knew the word that, if spoken, would undo the multiverse. Perhaps this is Echo. As to Laura, though, I understand that she sometimes meets with one who knew Echo before she stops speaking. The Laura, again. I don't know the question. Uh, I'm trying to find Vivian's scent. Do you know where it might be? Eva shakes her head. Speak with Nanny. She is forever pacing about, observing everything intently. Okay, looks looks like we need to speak to Dolora. I'm trying to find Marissa's Crimson Veil. Do you know where it might be? Yes, uh, shakes her head. But Marissa is an interesting tale. Would you hear of it? Yes! <clears throat> Once upon a time in a world of heroes and a time of petty childish gods, there were three sisters cursed with a hideous appearance. They were considered demons by the te people of the land and forever shunned. One missed her sisters terribly, yet left that world with its shame behind, but exchanged the pettiness of a pantheon for the pettiness of self. What? That's it? Was, was that it? 
Did I miss something? Did I miss a go on? No, that, that was it. Do you know anything about Ravel Puzzle Bell? I can't even. I need to mouse over it. The tale of Ravel Puzzle Bell, frightener of children, begins and ends with a question What can change the nature of man? Go on. Many were the times she posed this riddle to those who approached her, those who sought to glean from her the strange magics that she alone seemed to possess. All attempted to answer her query, but to no avail, and they found the price of her, of their wrong answer to be some horrible fate, always more terrible than the last victims. To recount their various torments would be to speak of things that nightmares are woven from. The tale strikes me in this way, Ravel herself knew not the answer to this question, but she lost it for such an answer. Only the why of the matter remained in question. Why did the nature of a man matter to one of Grey Sisters, especially of one such power as Ravo? It is said that she put the question to the Lady of Pain, not directly, but shouted it to Sigil itself, daring for the Lady to answer, when no reply was forthcoming. She wove terrible magics that threatened to open the cage let the fury of the plains roll in like a wave. She, re she received no answer other than banishment. To this day, no one knows the answer to Ravel's question. And now, there is no one to petition. For Ravel's herself, for Ravel herself is gone. Lost to the plains. Updated my journal. Okay. So we need to look for the lady, perhaps. I don't know where to... That's all I wish to know. So we need to find Dolora. All right. That's it? You're just done with me and like closing the door? Dolora. How did I miss you? You know about the secret back door. Oh. <clears throat> Before we get started with Dolora, actually, it's kind of interesting that so this raven wanted to know the nature of man, so maybe that is why she created me, in a way. Because I have infinite time to figure it out, perhaps. Assuming there is no simple, uh, simple answer to that. That is, that would satisfy her, at least. This dark-haired, pale-skinned woman has a, has a cultured, refined look about her. She turns uh, to you. You note uh, that her eyes, which you had previously thought to be grey, are the color of brushed steel. Greetings. The woman's voice is soft, calm, and without inflection. It has a certain far-away quality. It is somehow not attached to her. <clears throat> soft? Greetings, I'm called Dolora. May I serve you somehow? In what ways can you serve me, Dolora? She blinks her eyes, then touches her hand to her heart, bowing her head slightly. I am able to debate any scholarly or at academic matter quite proficiently. Is that is your wish? I'm also well versed in various games of strategy, should you wish to play something, though I have the materials for s such for few such games here that's what I want let's play some board games finally <clears throat> I was hoping for something of a more physical nature <laughs> Dolora seems neither intrigued nor repulsed but the but answers in the same flat tone then you are mistaken as to the purpose of this establishment, the brothel caters to the lust of the celebro sort, and uh, not those of the loins. In any case, I can assure you I would make a most unsat unsatisfactory partner. Oh, and why would you say that? That is simply my nature. Allow me to show you. Show away. She reaches out to touch your arm. Allow her. Dolora runs the black of her hand along your forearm, back of her hand along your forearm, her skin is smooth and dry but cold, like chilled iron, 
The touch uh, sends a shiver down your spine and sets the hairs of your arm on end. <clears throat> Do not trouble you yourself to ask who or what I am, for I will only tell you that this is simply my nature. <clears throat> well, that's a bummer. Let's play some board games. Well, very well. Alright, could you play a game then? Of course. Is there anything in particular you wish to play? I don't really remember any games. <laughs> here, here, then. Allow me to show you one. The Laura brings out a thin lac lacquered box, which unfolds into a small board marked with a grid. The contents of uh, the box prove to be a number of polished stone chips. Half of them black, half of them white. This game goes by many names. Shall I explain the rules to you? I'm not gonna play bloody checkers! No! I'm gonna take a hard pass on that! Actually, let me ask you some questions. <clears throat> Alura casts her eyes to the floor with a sound that might be a sad sigh. I'm willing to serve as you as a pat patron, but have no wish to answer other questions at this time. My apologies, but I fear you shall simply have to bear with that for the time being. What's wrong? Anything I can help you Updated with? Updated my journal. She looks up from the floor and into your eyes once more. You're struck by the pale smoothness of her skin, the cold depths of her sil silvery eyes. No, I fear not. My troubles are a matter of, of the heart. In time, I think all things shall be reserved. Oh, come on, no. If you want someone beat up, I'll fix that. Are you certain there is nothing I could do? Certain? Dolora pauses as if thinking. No, I'm not. My first love, Mary Man, possesses still the keys to my heart. So long as he has them, I shan't be free to love another. This is the cause of my melancholy. Um, I would assume this is metaphorically, but it could be literally. Even if you're... Like, no. I mean, like... Okay, it could be literal as well. Like, you love the guy, but... Uh, like... Okay. So, okay. Let's just ask some questions. Why did you seek him out? Speak with him. Dolora shakes her head. I may not leave this place. The reasons why are are deeply personal and not to be shared with strangers, even ones who might bestow a kindness upon me, but suffice to say that I cannot seek out Merriman myself. I'll find this Merriman and speak to him on your behalf. Updated my journal. Dolora nods, the slightest hint of smile appearing on her lips. She bows her head. Were you to find and speak with Merriman, I would be most grateful. He is a member of the Society of Sensation, so you may wish to ask for him at the Civic Festival. Uh, festival. I return when I find him. Oh, well. So let's just let's just find that guy. Done. Done. He's gonna find him. No problem. <clears throat> Merry man. I mean, like, not, I'm not sure who you are. I'm gone. But done. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm here. gone. You must be a fool to not uh, pursue a relationship with that lovely woman. Unless you have I'm something gone. else going on. <clears throat> and you're just a, just a good guy. But in that case, I need to talk to her. Done. Okay. It's no no good. That It's just not gonna happen. You gotta... Come on, open I'm gone. The door. Where's this merry man? All right, guys, need to spread out. We gotta find this guy. I don't know where he is. Which side? That's the. All right. That's the statue, statue like guy. All right. Anyway. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. I believe this is a good time to take a break. So hope you guys had fun. Tell me if you did. Come on, stop fooling around, guys. Jesus, Morty, I need you here. Need you here for the outro. Come on. Come on. Chop 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 ch
Have a good one.